That's right. my bigger concern is not the MCAT. It's your Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A sponsored by Blueprint MCAT Prep. How are you today? I am great. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. What can I help you with? Um, okay, so kind of a long-winded question, but um, basically the heart of the question is just, I'm not sure when to take my MCAT. Um, mm. I'm a fourth year um, on track to apply this cycle. Um, I was planning to take it in April, um, and I was given that advice through my pre-health advisor who said, you want to take it in April just in case you get a bad score so that you can retake it in May as a last resort if that's what you need. Yep. Um, but the way my semester is looking class-wise, I'm in four upper division science classes to end. Um, <laughs> my, Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just not sure that like I'll be ready by then. Yeah. Um, I, my low, my weakest point, I guess in my application is definitely my GPA. It took me a while to kind of get my footing. Um, I do have the upward trend. There Great. is one like little dip one summer, but that was circumstantial and, and I'm not, I'm not that concerned about it cause I know I can explain if I need to. Okay. Um, but that being said, my GPA is my weakest part, so I know how important it is to end the semester strong. Yep. Um, and with the four science classes and studying for the MCAT, I'm just like the closer it's getting, the like less sure I'm. I I, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. Like realistically. Yep. So I'm not sure if I should stick with the plan of just like just trying it, doing it in April, maybe risking a not great score, mm. or taking it after I apply because I, I mean I'm ready to go ready to apply once applications open um, I guess I'm just kind of terrified that what if I get a bad score and that's what needs to get sent out to those schools yeah. that I apply to yeah so I, I think the the question you're not asking is a more important question is if you take it in April I'm not worried about your MCAT score because that's easy to fix right obviously okay. you gotta study again and take the MCAT again but what happens if your grades drop because you're spending time away from your classes to right. study for the MCAT? That's right. my bigger concern is not the MCAT. It's your grades. Okay. Especially if you are trying to overcome some earlier struggles, you have a nice upward trend. You want to keep that trend. You don't want right. to drop back down for your last semester just so you can squeeze in the MCAT. And so the fact that you're concerned about it may be concerned for the wrong thing, but the fact that you're thinking about it is good, right? Because a lot of students will just charge straight ahead and go, well, my advisor said, take it in April, and if I get my score back, I can take it in May. That kind of logic to me is already flawed because most students, you're going to get your score back in May. How are you going to turn around and take the MCAT again that same right. month? So you're going to have to fix whatever was wrong the first time to study. So I think there are, there are a few questions here. The first question is, if you put off the MCAT until after your classes, mm -hmm. when do you think the first time that you can take the MCAT would be? Meaning, let's say, when do, when do classes end for you? Uh, May 5th, I okay. think. So May 5th, you're done with classes. Let's say you study for a month straight out for the MCAT, and you take the MCAT June, mid-June somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And you do well uh, on the MCAT at that point, and you get your score back mid-July, right? The 30-day whatever window to get your MCAT score back. Right. At that point your application isn't delayed at all because of your MCAT. Mid-July is when schools are starting potentially to kind of rub their eyes and get over the last application cycle and start opening up their email and opening up their databases and looking at all the secondary essays that are coming in. So you're not really delayed from taking the MCAT mid-June. Okay. Now, the, the kind of caveat to that is I would still want you to submit your application as soon as you can. And so you're submitting your application blind, meaning you don't have your MCAT score. And so something that students do to kind of protect against that is they just apply to one school. That way you're not spending a lot of money adding all of the schools to your list and, and being a quote unquote reapplicant at all of these schools, which 
in the grand scheme of things, doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But students don't like that label. Uh, and obviously, the cost is a big thing. And so can you finish your classes strong it, come May when applications open up, fill out all of your application stuff, get that done right now, right? You can be working on your personal saving, your extracurriculars, all of that stuff right now. Right. Get all of that into the applications so that come June 1st, for AMCAS at least, you can submit your application. And all of that time, you're focused on MCAT prep. You take the MCAT and, and do that. So we have this ideal situation that we tell students to follow, take it in March or April, the MCAT, and that will allow you to get your, your score back so that you have your score when you apply. But the ideal situation doesn't work for everyone, especially someone like you, who you have this really backloaded, uh, hard classes that you're finishing up mm -hmm. and you need to do well in them. Yeah. Um, I guess I didn't, I didn't really know that that was, uh, an, an option, like an avenue to take is just applying to one school and then adding the, and like, if that goes well and everything is great, then I can just add on the rest of the schools that I had planned to apply for. Um, I, yeah, I guess I just had no idea that, um, July wasn't late. Cause I know how important, and I know you like on all your, <laughs> all your stuff. Early, early, as early. Early as possible. Yep. But it does take, how long does it usually take for applications to even be like fine or approved? So here, here's the, the thing that students don't really think about is AMCAS and ACOMIS, this doesn't count for TMDSAS. TMDSAS doesn't have a verification process that they do immediately. You submit your application, as, as soon as the applications open up at the beginning of, beginning of May, you can mm -hmm. fill in all the information, click submit that same day. The schools get that application immediately. TMDSAS does the verification process on the back end uh, while schools are looking at your application. AMCAS and ACOMIS verify before sending to the schools. But if you apply early, the first wave of applications don't go out for a comus so do applications until mid-june so a comus opens up may 1st let's say you can fill in all of your information click submit may 2nd that first wave of applications doesn't go out until mid-june okay so no do schools historically and they may change this coming cycle but historically mid-june is when do schools start to see who is applying to schools. AMCAS, through the AAMC, they don't submit their first wave of applications until typically the third week of June. So opens up beginning of May. You can't submit historically until June 1st. But there's this three-week kind of lag period between when students can submit and when schools start to get that first wave of applications. And so that first wave of applications goes out, and then there's this delay period between secondary essays, right? So schools go, okay, thank you, Sally, for applying to us. Here's your secondary essay. Sally takes two weeks to turn around that secondary essay. Now you're looking first-ish week of July. And getting your MCAT score back a week later doesn't hurt you at all. Okay. Right. And so you're getting everything done. You're getting verified. You're submitting your application, all of that fun stuff. You're doing your secondaries. Right. And and by the time your MCAT score hits, the schools are just kind of ramping up to start the process for the next year. So, again, there's ideal. You have your score when you apply. And then there's here's the latest, really, that we really want you to do it. But everything, the, the, it's not just the timeline that is an issue, it's time requirements and what other responsibilities right. do you have? Are you working? Are you taking other classes? Uh, you're studying for the MCAT. How much work do you still need to do on your application? Mm -hmm. Typically what happens is students get so sucked, sucked into the MCAT prep that everything else gets pushed to the side. And right. now all of a sudden they're not submitting their application, right? And so if I told you, take the MCAT mid-June, 
what most students will do is they won't submit their application until after they take the MCAT, meaning they're just starting on their application mid-June. They right. got to write their, their personal statements, all of their extracurricular descriptions, all of that fun stuff. And they're not submitting their, their application until late June, early July. And now there's a month backlog to get verified and all this other stuff. Right. Yeah. So just, it's a, it's a bottleneck of, of a, of a process. Yes. I have been finding that out <laughs> every day that passes. Yes. <laughs> so I guess my last follow up question then would be the school that I apply to that, like the one school just so that I can submit the application. Cause I should have that ready in time would be, would that be a school that would that be like a throwaway school just in case? I wouldn't I wouldn't make it a throwaway school, right? That's that's just throwing away money. Uh, apply to a school that you want to go to and um, if you need to be a reapplicant at that school, it's not a big deal. It's okay. re- it's really not a big deal. Okay. I feel like there's some um I don't know, like a kind of a bad rep for reapplicants, which doesn't it doesn't make sense. There like, are. Like uh, well, weird... yeah, I'll tell you specifically why it's there. Um and and it's funny cuz I'm I'm just now I'm a, like hopefully a day or two away from uh, sending my my next book to the publisher. It's all about the application process. And there is a part on there about being a reapplicant. And and where that myth comes from, it's a misinterpretation of the data. So the AAMC does put out data on reapplicants. And it shows that reapplicants have a much harder time getting into medical school compared to a first-time applicant. And so students look at that data and go, oh, being a reapplicant is bad, right? But the data didn't say that at all. The data just said reapplicants don't get into medical school. Well, guess what a reapplicant is? Someone who didn't get into medical school the first time, right? right? So they had probably a crappy application the first time. And guess what they do the second time? Have a crappy application, <laughs> Right, And so we don't know who those students are, what's wrong with their applications. There's likely something very glaringly wrong with their applications, and they don't know better. Right? Right. And so they just continue to reapply with the same crappy application and get rejected again. And so it looks like being a reapplicant is bad, but we can't make that linkage just right. staring at the data. Right, We're supposed to be evidence-based and research-oriented, right? but pre-meds like to go, ooh, Reapplicants are bad. Look at that. <laughs> Don't be a reapplicant. But that's not what the data says at all. Right. Right. Because that doesn't take into account all the people who like took the time and effort to make their application better. Exactly. Like, no. Exactly. So. All right. Well, I think that really helped me. Definitely like took a weight off my shoulders because I was starting to kind of panic. So awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. You are welcome. How are you going to prepare for the MCAT? Um, since I've already started, cause I had the April date in mind, um, I've been using the Kaplan books. I got those really luckily at like a, a raffle. So that was really, cause th- those are very pricey. Um, yeah. and then I've been using Anki flashcards. Gotta love Anki. Love that. Yes. Yeah. And I got your book for the personal statement. So I got Great. that done. Great. Yeah. yeah. The the one extra thing I would add on to that, and their their sponsor of this episode is Blueprint Prep full length exams. And so um, historically, I would say Kaplan has one of the worst reputations for full length exams. Uh, oh. Obviously, the AAMC amazing, right? AAMC mm-hmm. they're the ones that mm-hmm. make the test. You want to use their full length exams, and they offer uh, five at this point: four scored, one unscored. I think that's the number. Um, but blueprint exams, like if you go onto Reddit uh, right now and, and you ask, there's a spreadsheet that goes around students ranking their favorite full-length exams. And blueprint exams are the second best, right behind the mm-hmm. AAMC in terms of accuracy of actually the the, the challenge of uh, how hard the full-lengths are and, mm-hmm. and as well score prediction. Right, so the the blueprint exams have a ton of data behind the scores that they are giving you, which is really what makes a, a score relevant and what makes those full lengths relevant. So, right. uh, blueprint offers up to ten exams that you can buy. Wow. We're actually on the, uh, which is a lot, right? That is a lot. Four, Fourteen exams, probably way overkill. Uh, but we've covered on the MCAT podcast. We've covered 
we're covering full length one right now, question by question in depth on YouTube. So you can follow along after you take it, you can go back and see what you got wrong and why, why you got it wrong, et cetera, uh, on YouTube through the podcast. And we've also done that with full length 10. Um, so go check it out. You can get four or six, uh, or 10 exams and you can get the first one as well as a, a half length diagnostic through blueprintprep.com. So, okay, will do. Yeah. I think I've definitely bookmarked them and I've bookmarked like all of, cause most <laughs> websites all have like the one free one. Yep. So, yeah. I'll definitely look into those. Awesome. Anything else I can help you with? Uh, no, thank you for everything you do. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome.